All right, June eleventh, part two, Saturday. Forty five hours into my dry fast. Another gorgeous day. I've always loved those Airstream campers. I am not <coughs> into this lifestyle as far as a pole camper. I did it in my early 20s, or when we sold the ranch, actually in my early 30s. We went to Oregon, five cats, two dogs. Uh, we, the horses and the macaw, the other animals came later. But we had two trucks, and behind one of them, we pulled a camper, probably that size. <coughs> my ex did, and um, I don't pull trailers. <laughs> I'm spatially challenged. It was weird. People were like, what are you doing? I mean, back then, gosh, I talk about back then as if it was, but it seemed like yeah, it was a whole different world. Like, yeah, you're over 55, over 60, over 65, and you're out on the road in, in that get up. But we had, you know, a big one ton um, Dodge truck, four wheeler in the back, camper, another Dodge truck, three quarter ton, and um, we were just touring around for the property ended up buying Cave Junction, Oregon. Long story. However, um, uh, I've experienced that life, you know, and and you see people, they drive so fast on the highways and the, just, they just are so dangerous to me and weird. So I like the kind of campers that, you know, like that. Well, that's one thing, because you can only park in a certain, whatever, it's so big. But um, I like that are all in one, not a pole trailer. I like touring around the campground. There's just, it's just kind of neat. And the different things that people do in the different lots. Like these ones made a sand pit. Alright, are you ready to head down to the beach? Alright, put your hat on. Yeah, let's go. Beach trail's right here. We'll stay a few nights in the flag, Fort Flagler campground. I think it's a little cheaper. Last I, I stayed at, uh, I stayed at Fort Townsend in the off season. It was like thirty some dollars for camping spot. You know what? You'd, what motel prices used to be now, you have to pay to camp out in the woods. In Montana, we just go camp out in the fucking woods. But over here in the civilized world, um, it's not like that. You can't just camp anywhere on Mother Earth. Yeah, rules, rules. There's rules, rules, rules. <laughs> Barf. When are you gonna grow up, Crystal? When I'm dead. Yep. Are you excited? Look at that. Tide indeed. 
that over there. I'm not walking down there today. You'll have to imagine what it's like. But <coughs> I might tonight, but I'll have to save my energy to get back to the top of the hill. I'm not feeling a lot of energy. I'm just feeling. Anyway, three more hours to go. It's funny, I don't remember if I started my fast at 3 or 3.20 because the day before I started it at 3.20. definitely things going on in my body which if you're interested Reverend Crystal Cox at gmail.com okay we'll go with the ways See how the water's flowing that way. It's so interesting how it's just all these different directions. And yeah, some of it's wind and then it's um, undercurrents and it's just all kinds of neat stuff. All right. Headed back up the hill. It's interesting. Um, I can go up that hill over there, like, ah. there's a trail right in there, I could go halfway up that hill and then over the parking lot that way, there's many ways up to the top, I don't think I'll do that today though, because that hill wins me when I'm not fast, I don't feel winded or anything, but I do all of a sudden, I feel you know, as per a month. <laughs> ah, beautiful flowers. I like to walk, um, well, I like to walk all the time, but I didn't walk a lot when I was at my church. I went out to, you know, Fort Flagler and stuff some, but because I don't like to be on the highway. already cleansing and removing stuff and then you just you know do it super duper when you walk on the dry fast or work out or anything and then weights and walking and get all that living in a car I didn't before um, I didn't dry fast over 20 hours in the car I didn't know what would happen and I didn't want to be alone but I did it at the church building once for 60 hours and, and so I was like okay okay you know when you have access to a bathroom and all that and, but then the other day it just kind of naturally happened and I felt strong and I felt so strong at the 24 hour mark I decided to keep going to 48 Well, that ain't how I like to do it, though. I like to just do three more hours, or six, or shoot for this, or shoot for that, or have a smoke and go to sleep and shoot for morning. You know, when I start the dry fast, I shoot for 12 hours. Otherwise, I would overwhelm myself. Truck like that, but gray. Actually, it was a 
Um, I like these forward power strokes. I think they're sexier than the new GMCs. Super duties. Um, diesel engine and other people in the campground are like the best like the one ton Chevys that we're out of with the um, different type of diesel engine and um, just how luxurious it is on the highway and stuff. So I always thought I'd do that next time. I always had Ford cars and trucks. The first car was a Ford Escort and then luckily I had some bike to fix that. why we got the Dodge truck, because it was like that. And then I had various trucks. The, the SUV I have now is the first I've had like that, but it sure is quite more practical for living in a truck. The water table is like a little condo back there. Well, you know what I mean. Except for without a kitchen and a bathroom and, you know, condo stuff. But, fuck man, I was sleeping in the front of a tiny, tiny, I can interpret that. Oh, actually, I don't mean when I had the rig. I meant, you know, my stepsister and, uh, well, Florida was very generous. Very generous, but fuck. No, last year, this time, I was on a couch with someone that was very nice. Uh, when the great folks started, I, uh, there was no bathroom to open, there was just everything kind of seized, and so I stayed with my friend for, um, until it was over. It's not over. No, I left as quick as I could because I'm feral. You know? I, uh, don't want to be caged in an apartment, a basement apartment. People walking above where you can hear when they go to the bathroom, hear when they shower, hear when they move. My vehicle's a dream compared to that. An absolute dream. Anyway, so more dry fast stuff. You kind of feel it. You feel everything tightening, you know. You feel it eating the bad stuff. And um, the purge is this whole other level. It's just... It's magnificent. You know, all of the alternative medicine stuff I studied, all the healing I've done since I was 16, all the healing stuff before that and of course it's in my blood is like a fifth six millionth generation witch I uh, never thought dry fasting was a thing I knew people did it I've heard of yogis that by locate and I heard of this transcendence sort of and fasting for health but I thought you died if you didn't have food or water for three days but people do this for weeks and weeks I'm not going to, but um, I didn't know that, you know, if you just stop putting in everything, the inflammation, everything goes away, your body and your innate intuition of your body resets and it knows what to do to heal everything once you stop putting stuff into it, you know? I used to think that, you know, at these books, you're not sick, you're thirsty, about the importance of hydration, and, um, and I studied that. And um, I had a naturopath tell me, she told me I was forming a brain tumor in my early 20s. <coughs> and I was drinking too much water and I was, you know, over diluting the potassium in the minerals. So I did liquid potassium. And anyway, this story is another day. There's just something miraculous about dry fasting. It'll eat tumors, it'll, cancerous cells will die off. Anything 
half dead will die off. And so what was my worst health cells before when I dry fasted are now my best ones. So you just get stronger and stronger. I mean, because the last 10 months at my church, I ate the fuck out of whatever I could find, right? Oh my God, I had paro soup, I had turkey chili, I had burgers and steaks and ice, ice, ice galore. And so I, uh, so that was amazing. Beautiful mountains, fire pit. Spanish guys were standing there talking, just, you know, really fast and really colorful and magical, and, you know, like two guys that just walked by, they really, and then, um, I had to walk through them, you know, so I said, hello, and they go, hello, or, like, said a couple words to me, and it was so dull, it was like, their language and their, their talk was so colorful and so beautiful, and then they spoke to me in English, and it was so bland. Oh my god, I can't even tell you the fucking smells out here, man. They're having a big old food smorgasbord. There's fire pits and burgers burning. And then there's that restaurant up there. Cafe, whatever you call it. It doesn't, well it does make me hungry, but I'm not feeling like I'm starving or I would eat. I feel like, uh, I just love the smell. I think I'll get off the road. How about that? Those old buoys are neat. Kids love to play on them. And, um, I've seen people that um, cut them in half and use them as fire pits. Ooh, smells yummy over there. So last night, I heard this thing I was listening to. I said, what is it about love that makes you feel satisfied? And I was like, whoa. So I did a bunch of lessons last night examining what is it about like someone else's love that makes me feel satisfied. It was quite interesting because, you know, if I'm not satisfied by myself and I'm expecting someone else to be my satisfaction, that's not really a relationship, right? That's to see codependency, serious codependency. So it was an interesting question to examine. Of what is it about love that makes you feel satisfied? That people seek it. They seek love with another to have a satisfaction. What is that satisfaction? Yeah, that's the kind of truck we had. Except for when we got it, we took it straight to this place. See, what happened is, we, uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, we were getting our camper uh, fixed up or something somewhere. I think s s toppers in Kalispell. Oh, I love that water. And, um, we borrowed one of their vehicles, and he had that truck. And on these huge... There's someone behind me. I think sometimes people think I'm following them. Anyway, he had on these giant bumpers, welded bumpers for, you know, deer or, you know, if you might hit someone on the highway, you don't totally your vehicle. And 
so, oh my fuck, man. I'm feeling this hill. Um, anyway, I feel like, you know, there's training shows where you go underwater and then you have to be cognitive, or they take away your oxygen and you gotta be cognitive. Very pretty. And they had airplane lights in, in them, like landing lights. And they were so cool so you could really see the deer. So we got those on three of our rigs. All these, of course, well, I'm not gonna say that. Positivity is what we're doing. Okay. So pretty. See that tree? Yeah. I'm gonna pop a squat, as they say. Otherwise known as sit down. Isn't that bench beautiful? Yeah, after I walk, especially like that, I mean, that was quite a ways. I, I uh, do want a big ol' ice water. So, what happens is, hmm, oh my gosh, the lighthouse, mountains, 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 mountains. See my outfit? <laughs> Hoofda. <clears throat> anyway, what did I say? Don't know, don't care. Yeah, I pretty much got three more hour, full hours for 48. So, um, going back to the rigmarole, and I'm going to smoke and meditate and probably nap. So I really want to get to the 48 hour mark. Hello. Hello. Had to rest halfway up that hill. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> that was cute. I talk. All right. Didn't even wear my sweatshirt. It's definitely sweatshirt like out here, but if you weren't walking know where it's like it really is a weird storm like they said it's got um say say there's strips of wind and one strips cold one strips medium cold one strips warm one strips warmer it's kind of like that see there's the chevys chevy silverados I like macho, watch out bumpers myself, though. All right, say goodbye. Goodbye, view. I love you so much.